Right, welcome. This is the first one I'm going to do uh, for Will It Work? It's my new series, and I just want to explain a couple of things about this um, series, uh, and eventually you'll um, see a whole lot more of these, but my goal is to make all of those videos fairly short so we don't waste everybody's time. And so I'm just going to cover everything in this episode, and then when somebody has a snarky comment in uh, a future episode, I'm just going to point them at this one so everybody understands what this is all about. Uh, first of all, this isn't Tech Moan or some show where I'm all knowledgeable about everything that I own. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of research on all this stuff. I do have a, a lot of knowledge uh, about a lot of the consoles that I own, which is over 200. And, uh, but I, I think that there's lots of other video shows out there that will show you probably new versions of these things, uh, fully working in pristine condition, and will tell you their entire history and probably have cutaways and interviews with the people that made them and, and all of that sort of thing. And if that's what you're interested in, absolutely you know, go and check that out. If you really care about like a Radio Shack TV scoreboard, there's probably somebody that did a great video about the Radio Shack TV scoreboard, and you should go watch that person's video if you care enough about it to check it out. Purpose of these videos isn't to go through the history of every every one, although if I do happen to know or remember something particularly interesting, I'll I'll tell you about it, and you can, um, you know, kind of learn a little few tidbits that I might know. But ultimately, the goal here is to just see if any of these things work. I have over 200 of these. A lot of these have been involved in moves uh, from one location to another. Some sat in the cold, some sat outside. And a lot of them, I, the vast majority of them probably, I bought uh, used. And I never really plugged them in and turned them on because I was mostly interested in a lot of the aesthetics uh, of the systems and... Uh, you know, the, the fact is, is like there's a, there's a history here of how uh, consoles evolved over time and things like controllers and um, the way, you know, you kept score and the way you selected games and the way um, uh, memory was held. And, and all of these things has been a long journey from like 1972 when the Odyssey came out uh, all the way up until today. And so, you know, for me, a lot of it, like, with video games, like, collecting games didn't seem that interesting to me because games can always be emulated. And you can always go online and find a pirated copy of a game and, um, you know, find an emulator that will probably play it and, you know, give you mostly the same experience about that game. So... I was never really interested in the in the collecting of games. It just didn't seem like um, if I want to play one, I could find one online. But controls and consoles is different because you can't really emulate uh, the controls and consoles um, uh, like you can with, you know... I mean, maybe you could get a 3D printer and you could build like this or something. I don't know. It would probably cost you, like, more than it's worth. And uh, I don't know who would bother to do such a thing. So in a lot of cases, it's really interesting uh, to me ab about how these came about. And I wanted to sort of um, collect them, and I've collected them over the years, but I'm getting older. I'm almost 50, and I have a long way to go yet, I hope. But, uh, you know, I I've had a few health scares, and I don't want to leave a whole bunch of trash uh, sitting around for my nieces and um, my great-nephews. So my goal here is to uh, try all of these consoles out, and the ones that are working, I'm going to keep, and the ones that are not working, I will probably, in quotes, uh, sell them uh, online uh, as junk. Because there's lots of people out there that will fix them and appreciate them more, probably. Uh, I don't see myself opening a museum or anything anytime soon for all of these consoles, uh, so there's no point in keeping a bunch of broken ones. Uh, it's just like um, they're just going to rot and get worse where somebody could clean them up and make them work better. So uh, and then if the ones that work, I'm going to keep those until I retire at some point, And then I think I'll probably sell them off. So, again, uh, when I do die and pass on, my family isn't, you know, 
uh, buried underneath a mountain of old game systems and consoles. Now, one other thing I'll point out is that I have a lot of extraneous video game junk that uh, I just call it junk, but uh, that I've collected over the years, and uh, a lot of it was swag sent from other companies, bonus things, small items I've purchased, um, you know, little things here and there. Uh, and um, for instance, I have like a Nintendo 64 backpack that I never used. I have like a, a keyboard uh, adapter for the Sega Saturn for its Netlink, because I guess at one point you could go online with the Sega Saturn. Uh, I don't know what you would do online with the Sega Saturn. I could look it up, but I, like whatever I have, the I have that. You know what I mean. And and a lot of old handhelds and things like you know Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. They had like battery packs and speakers and worm lights and all sorts of things. So I will probably make little videos about each of those novelties uh, as I list them on eBay, both for the eBay seller, so he has something that he could look at, as well as you know just as a curiosity item for anybody that's just interested and say, hey, I had one of those, and just, you know, take a, a minute or two to look at it in a video. That's that's the ultimate goal. I don't want to make long videos. If I get a console to work, I will show a little bit of gameplay, but I'm not going to go through a big, long thing about games unless it's uh, unless I have a bunch of games and that they are interesting enough that I will, you know, make a longer video for them. Obviously, more advanced consoles will probably have more advanced um, videos. But a large portion of my collection has to deal with um, Pong systems and uh, most domestic United States systems. I do have a lot of Japanese systems, but not nearly as many as I do with American. And I have European and South American and uh, Australian, etc. I don't collect games, so not all my consoles have games. I will do my best to locate one game for a console and see if I can play that game for all of you. Uh, but uh, some games for some systems, because some systems are so rare, the games are just outrageously overpriced and I won't like buy one game just for a show off type of thing. I do know as well that I have a couple consoles that are broken right out of the box. Uh, I will show those to you uh, and um, I know they won't work. Uh, and I will either list them, or if they're really heavy, like, say, a laser active, I'll probably keep it or maybe throw it away. I, I hate to throw anything out, but a laser active is so big and so heavy that no one's going to want to pay postage on a broken one. Uh, so that's the kind of thing where I'll have to make a, make a decision on it. But anyway, that's all of the disclaimer. Uh, a lot of this is hands, but you may see videos of me actually in front of the camera. I'm not going to do one of those um, lawyer locksmith kind of things where it's just my hands all the time. It's just not easy to, you know, swing cameras around. And I want to keep things steady on a tripod so you can see the console. So that's the only reason. I, I'm almost 50. I don't care. Where, I, I'm not vain. I don't care what I look like on camera. Okay. All right. That's all done. So I'll just point to this video in the future if anybody wants to have anything in the future. These will be a lot shorter, and I'm just going to get to the to the guts of what we're looking at here. So this is a Radio Shack TV scoreboard. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in with this particular... Um, that's interesting. I don't know. I've never really used this um, mode on my phone. It's like a gimbal mode. And, um, anyway, it's even hard to tell if I'm like looking at things and if they're focused or not, but that has to do with me not wearing my glasses. So it's Pong. It's a Pong system. Okay. And we have, um, the way a lot of these worked, most of them use the same microchips. There's a couple of Pong systems, especially the Odyssey is the one I know of that didn't even use microchips. It used, uh, diodes, etc. And we'll get to the Odyssey eventually. That's a crazy system. Um, but uh, in terms of microchips, they they a lot of these Pong systems use the same one, and they sort of evolved over the years. And so you started out with a very simple single-player Pong. You went to sort of a multiplayer Pong. Uh, well, I, I should say single-player. I should say like two-player Pong to like a four-player. I think there's like there may be something even beyond that, um, like an eight-player or something. I'd have to look. Uh, and you had more games, games, uh, in quotes, because most of them were just variations of Pong. 
And, you know, Pong was mostly a 70s thing. It, you know, it started in the 60s, I believe, um, or very early 70s. I'm not looking it up right now. But in terms of the home market, it started in 72. And, you know, it went right on through uh, up until the beginning of like the um, early 80s when we finally had transitions to uh, the first programmable game consoles like the Atari 2600 and the um, Odyssey 2, the Intellivision, et cetera, that that sort of 8-bit generation kind of came around. And, and I know that all these generations are called something officially, but, you know, as a person who lived through it, okay, we weren't calling them like, that's this generation and that's that generation. There were basically Pong systems and then there were cartridge-based systems. And so... Um, Pong systems, though, for a decade, that's basically all you could get. There were a couple of variations that um, added some additional games, but mostly it was Pongs and some shooting gallery stuff, which we will show and I will get to. So, all right. So this one is TV scoreboard, and Radio Shack made a number of these uh, TV scoreboard uh, systems all called TV scoreboard, that they went through some variations and changes over the years. Uh, this one um, is pretty basic. You know, it comes in a one solid piece uh, of plastic. Um, you know, you have a manual serve versus an auto serve. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what an angle is, but it's probably has something to do with when you hit the ball. It go, kind of goes a little weird, which is a little bit advanced. You've got ball speed and the bat size so you can decide how big your uh you know your um slider is on the screen your bat right and then you got an on off switch you got a serve button and a game reset button and four games which is tennis hockey squash and practice so basically three uh, so this is probably early because it only has the uh the four games and um, one thing, too, is that the very first ones didn't keep score. Uh, they didn't have uh, enough intelligence to keep score. Uh, so you had to keep score by yourself. It looks like this one doesn't have any kind of score keeping because it usually would have like a thing where you would move a slider or, or a wheel <coughs> to keep score. And we're not seeing that here. As well, uh, the first ones were in black and white. Uh, they eventually made them into color. You know, honestly, it it isn't much of a selling point if the game is the same to me. I, I People weren't probably like, ooh, look at those graphics. I mean, they looked probably exactly the same, but hey, whatever. <laughs> That's how it was. One player, oddly, you know, it's on an angle uh, rather than up, like straight up and down. And uh, over here, it's a slider. And it's got a decent, f you know, feel to it. It's not too loose. It's kind of smooth. Uh, it's not too stiff or stuck. It's a little rough right there. Um, probably from some dirt being in there. We'll see if it works. Uh, also, a lot of these old systems will have a, a speaker. Uh, and we're not seeing a speaker here. So this probably is putting sound through the RF cable connected to the system. On the back, it's, uh, oh, there's our speaker. Because there's no fans in these things. So this is definitely a very old system. It's got a speaker here. And it has a battery compartment where you could play this with, um, looks like six, I'm going to say C cell batteries. Well, yeah, it looks like C's. Um, which, you know, are expensive and probably only work for about three minutes. Uh, this is where you could change which channel. It was a three or four that you were going to uh, broadcast it on. And just some FCC info, um, et cetera, that's kind of blurry, but I'm not going to try to mess with it right now. Okay. Barrel, you hear that? <laughs> what, is, what is that spring in there? Huh, that's hilarious. Okay. Now, in terms of the power plug... All right, so what we'll do is we'll see if we get power, and then I will uh, stop the video and I'll aim it at the uh, the television itself and let you see it uh, from the screen as I'm trying to get through it. Um, in the future, I am going to uh, run some video. 
straight through the uh, into the uh, um, into the unit itself. Sorry, I, see now it's like it's all zoomed. <laughs> um, magic, like when you drop your uh, you when you drop your tripod, suddenly things zoom in. Um, first video, so you got to bear with me here. Uh, I wish I could tell you, zoom not supported for this mode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But why is it all of a sudden zoomed in now to the to the unit like this? Uh, all right. Well, anyway, if we do get power on a system, I will show you the screen. But in the future, I may also run video straight in uh, to give you a better uh, a better image, right? But it's um. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to, to do that. You know, it requires some video editing. And for a Pong system, I'm just not interested in putting in that kind of work. But maybe later systems, if we really want to kind of look at the way things were, uh, I'll definitely um, consider doing that for certain game systems. Okay. If uh, a system doesn't power on, I'm not going to open it up and mess with it too much. I'll maybe have some thoughts on it about what it might be. Um, and then I'll just sort of make a decision if I'm going to sell it or not. Uh, also, on that same topic, uh, certain systems like CD systems, they run, you know, they have belts that spin the disc. And uh, those belts do go bad after a while. And that doesn't mean the console itself is bad. It just means that the belt, the belt's probably worn out or, you know, got loose or fell off or something. And they can be repaired. Whether or not I'm going to want to repair them, I'm not quite sure, but I don't think I'll sell them. They'll still probably turn on. They'll still probably display something on the screen, which means they're functional. Uh, and, you know, maybe at some point uh, when I get uh, old and retired, you know, I'll get out the uh, the giant magnifying glass and the, and the tools and, and the soldering iron and um, try and put these things back together. A lot of things probably need to be recapped anyway. Uh, it's amazing if they still work. Things like this are probably like, you know, 40, 50 years old at, at some points, you know, so, um, yeah, you know, we're, we're getting up there now What 1972. So you're talking like next year's 50 years old for the Odyssey, uh, a lot of age and these systems just weren't designed to last that long. So enough talk. Let's see if it works. So we got our crazy, uh, adapter plug. I'm going to put it in here. It doesn't snap in. It feels a little loose. This is probably typical of the time period. And let's try turning it on. And nothing. Let's wiggle this guy. Oh, there we go. Gotta, let's add a little leverage to that. There we go. All right, I'm going to pause the video here, and then we'll um, take a look and see if we can get something on the screen. All right, so as you can see, it's working. You might hear a little bit of static. Uh, I can't quite turn the TV down all the way because unless I have a no static, the TV, this old TV doesn't let me, um, let me do it. Uh, the white lines that you're seeing is because it's, uh, you know, being... An, an old uh, CRT TV, and so it's you know using a uh, a tube and uh, running at 60 hertz, and so while you see these lines coming down the screen like this, I don't actually see that with my own eyes. You're, you know that's part of the vertical vertical blank that you're seeing due to the timing, uh, but it doesn't display on my screen. I do have an adapter that I'm getting that's going to run these in to uh, HDMI as well as composite. And I'm thinking this is probably, this this effect will go away. Uh, and there's the static. Let me see if I can turn that down. Let's see. It won't let me... It won't let me turn it down. But anyway, then it stops. All right, but it looks like this game system's working. So that's really cool. So let's see if we can go ahead and play a game. Let's, um, let's practice. Let's go ahead and try that. Um, hit game reset. I'll hit serve, and I have, where is my, oh, there I am. All right, let's try that again. 
So the field of motion is there. You can go right off the screen with it. Uh, it is black and white. And it does keep score. So that's a good sign. So this is like the second evolution of Pong or something because um, it's uh, black and white. So it's not color, but it does keep score. I'd say first evolution is just black and white, no score. Now let's try and serve the ball again. Wow. It's not much of a score, though. It's just telling me how many times I've lost. Woo! This is it. This is what you got to do in the 70s. All right, let's make this bigger. There. There's the large. Might be a little bit easier to play. Oh. I am trying to play this while I uh, have a tripod in front of me and... I'm just going to make as many excuses as I can as to why I'm terrible at Pong. Okay, so that's practice. And you could switch things in the middle. This is, um, it looks like, yeah, the one that's dirty. It's not tracking too well. That could be clean, though. It probably just needs some alcohol. There may even be a belt with these old sliders like this. So it looks like the multiplayer aspect's not there. That's uh, tennis, which is probably self-explanatory. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to lose to the... To the no player. Okay. <clears throat> Hockey, which is, you know, like that. Four player, or like it looks like it's four player, but it's four bars. You know, you could probably like play against yourself almost. Yeah, that's right. It puts like a bias on it or something when it comes up from behind. Yeah, like a swerve like that. So that's kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Then you got squash, which is like uh, you hit it and then I hit it kind of thing. It goes right through me because it's that other person's turn to hit it. Yeah. And we already saw practice. So that's essentially it. Uh, we could turn the ball speed on high. I don't know, man. You probably drink a lot of beers or something and just play this and be like, yeah, game over, dude. Let's go, let's go burn, do burnouts in our muscle cars or something back in the 70s. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the TV scoreboard. We're probably going to see other consoles, that, like when we have to get to the gameplay, other Pong consoles that are going to look exactly the same. But it's nice to see that this one's working. It does have the original power adapter, so pretty happy about that. Uh, so this one's gonna, this one's gonna be a keeper, and like I said in the future, uh, the, the next videos I do, they're gonna be shorter than this. Um, so thanks for watching, and, uh, look forward to the next one. See ya.